Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to write a program that exponentiates. So given the base and the exponent, it will return x to the n. So given x, which is going to be the base, and n, which is going to be the exponent, we want x to the n. And so before we do this program, let me explain how we are going to attempt to do it. So what we're going to do is simply think about it. So when n is 1, the program has to return x. Okay, easy enough. When n is 2, it has to return x squared, which is x times x. When n is 3, it has to return x times x times x. And when n is 4, we have to get x times x times x times x, etc. So notice that to go from x to x times x, we multiply by x. And then to go from x times x to x times x times x, we also multiply simply by x. Likewise, to go from here to here, we also multiply by x. So it makes sense to attempt to try to use a for loop, where in each iteration of the for loop, we simply multiply the current value by x. So in fact, just as a note here, let's go ahead and decide right now that we are going to that we are going to um, call that our value. Okay, that's what we're going to call our value. Okay, let's go ahead and write the code for this and work through it. So we'll include our header file here, and here I'm just going to go ahead and put the main function here, and then here we'll have um, our variables. We're going to use x and n just because. Um, we have them up here in our, in our little bit of uh, scratch work, our little thinking, right? Thinking is important. <laughs> so that's really, and then figuring out how to code it, right? That, that's, that's also uh, the fun part, right? I think it's the fun part. So, so we have X and we have N. Okay, so we need to create a function um, that does this for us. So I'm going to go down here and write a function that does that for us. And then here in the main, we'll have the code that will ask the user for x and n. So let's just take a sidestep here and write the function that will um, you know, compute, uh, do the exponentiation for us, okay? So we need a, um, a variable here for our for loop. Let's just use i. And uh, we're going to use value for the value of what we want. So this, this power function will return x to the n. And so it'll return it to main, and then we'll print it out on the screen. Let's start our for loop. We'll start at 1. And if you think about it, if n is 2, we need two copies of x. If n is 3, we need three copies. If n is 10, we need 10 copies. So this will run uh, as long as i is less than or equal to n. So we have exactly uh, n iterations. And here's where it gets a, a, a little bit um, tricky, okay? Um, so when i is equal to 1, um, we need value to be equal to uh, x, okay? Um, the problem is um, this is going to do nothing, right? It's not going to um, keep multiplying it. So what we can do is we can set value equal to 1. And what this will do is it will make it so that when i is equal to 1, we get 1 equals 1 times x, so value is assigned the value of x. Now i is 2, let's pretend this is satisfied, and then so value is x now, so value times value, value times x will be x squared, so value is x squared. Increments again, i is 3. At this point, i is 3 and value is x squared x squared times x is x cubed. So every single time we go through this for loop, every single iteration is going to give us uh, exactly one copy of x. So if it goes through once, we just get x. If it goes through twice, we get x times x, etc. And after the for loop is terminated, we want to return the value to main. So I'm just going to type uh, return value. OK, now this is our function, and it looks OK. I don't see any mistakes. I hope there's not any mistakes. Now let's go ahead and ask the user to enter the base. So please enter the base. Let's be nice and say please. 
And then I'm going to use scanfs. Um, this compiler tends to give me um, warnings and stuff about scanf being possibly unsafe, and I have to include something up here as a preprocessor command or use scanfs to circumvent that. So I will just use scanfs. You can use um, you can use uh, scanf a lot of times with other compilers. So uh, we are reading the base. So the base is x. So don't forget the ampersand. And then printf, please enter the exponent. Notice how I'm leaving a space after these two little dots. That's so there's a space in our code on the command line. Scanf s, percent d. And then now we want the exponent, so this would be n. Okay, this would be n. All right, and then the last thing we're going to do now um, is display the result. So printf. Let's be fancy. The value of percent %d to the percent %d power is percent %d. And so now we'll include three variables here. We're going to do the, the value of, so x, so x to the nth power is x to the nth power, which we've defined to be this beautiful function that we have created. And that should be good. I'm looking at this and really hoping there's no mistakes. I'm going to save the file. And let me just attempt to build it, see if we can catch any mistakes. I'm sure there must be some. There are no mistakes. Success. Very, very good. And now let's try to run it, and hopefully the code works as intended. So in Visual Studio 2019, what you do is you go up here and just start without debugging. Okay, enter the base. Let's start simple. Let's do 2 cubed. So 2 cubed should be equal to 8. So 2 to the third power. The value of 2 to the 3 power. Oh, I see, to the 3 power, because it's not third, right? So that would be interesting, right? Modify the program so that it will say first, second, third. <laughs> That could be a little bit of a pain, but it could be done, right? It could be done. I'm sure it can be done. Anything can be done, right, with, with the right mentality. Let's do it again. How about 5 to the 4th? 625. Very, very good, right? So we've done it. Hopefully this video uh, has taught you some stuff about C. Um, I think one of the biggest things to take away from this video is right here at the beginning, um, when you think about what you're trying to do, there's many ways to think about this, right? There's different ways to think about it. And the way I thought about it in this problem is that basically you want to just add an additional x each time. And since you're adding one copy of x each time, it makes sense to just use a for loop and do it that way. I hope this video has been helpful to someone out there who is trying to learn some code. Good luck.